everywhere boss few hours ago as the new cgn that was just appointed that finally come out to shock that lies bola i meant to you know it was few days ago that nobu traveled to france and when tinubu went for an unofficial duty after two days when he heard that they want to inaugurate and they want to swear in the new cgn kekele ekun tinubu came back to nigeria with the new presidential jet that was just bought and i see that is not enough after the inauguration of the kekele ekun new cgn tinubu traveled to france within 24 hours now the former cgn and the new CGN have finally come out to shock that lies Bola and Tinubu. Tinubu is on a very high jump now. They said the woman is corrupt, but come and hear what the woman said. She's not going to work with Aine Sham and Mama Yakubu and take bribe and sell the election to Bola and Tinubu now. Tinubu never expected what the woman said in this very video now. APC is in serious trouble ahead of 2027 election right now because the woman they put in place have finally come for this. So I'd like us to stay connected to the end of this video. I'm going to be playing you the full video in this very video. You're going to see everything in this video so you can share this video just do all to share it share it to the social media platforms let it go viral and if you can share it just like it as you're watching it like it give it a thumb up so that will be recommended for us just stay connected and coming back again welcome you back to lajibong wash tv i don't have bad news for you today the truth of religious gossip and if you should leave the man for mohammed what is happening in the christian door join now Hello my great wonderful viewers, welcome back to Lajipog Watch TV. For those of you coming across this channel for the very first time, ensure you click the red subscription button appearing in your video screen. At the same time, click the notification bell icon so that whenever we drop a new video in few hours time regarding what is happening in the political space, YouTube will easily let you to know. Castle a boss few hours ago after Tinubu ran out of Nigeria to France, you know, Tinubu left to France few days ago on an unofficial duty and they call it a particular time, they call it a walking stay. That is why Nigerians were asking questions regarding the visitation of Tinubu to France because the president of France, Macron, never come out to accept Bola Amen Tinubu. He never come out to accept him to the country in an official way. That's to tell you that the visitation of Tinubu to France is an unofficial visitation. And Tinubu went to France after the new jet that was purchased from China, the jet that China seized after the new jet came to Nigeria. It's not even up to 48 hours when Tinubu used the new jet to travel to France. And Nigerians were asking questions, what kind of working state the Tinubu went to do in France? Have Nigeria presidency turned to remote work now? Can you go to another country and be controlling Nigeria from the country where you seated? Is that how other president in the world comes to Nigeria, to Lagos, to Abuja, to Undo State, to Oshun State, to come and be controlling their country from there? Is that how Macron, the president of France, used to come to Nigeria and be controlling France from there? What kind of thing is happening in Nigeria? Those are the questions that Nigerians are asking now. That's not even where we're going to. When Tinubu heard that the inauguration and the swearing in of the new CJN is commencing, Tinubu ran back to Nigeria immediately. He did not waste time. He fly back to Nigeria on the same jet and he came to swear in the new CJN, Kekele Ekun, after Arigwala Teno have ended. He swear in Kekele Ekun and within 24 hours, Tinubu ran back to France again. Nobody know what Tinubu is doing in France because the president of France did not come out to accept Bola Ahmed Tinubu in France. And a lot of Nigerians are asking questions. Have Nigerian presidency turned to a remote work now? Is that how they have reduced the presidency in Nigeria to a remote work? Level. Now, a lot of people were asking questions regarding the new CJN that was put to place by Bola Ahmed Tinubu. They said the woman is corrupt. That's where we're going to. They said the woman is corrupt. She has involved herself in a lot of electoral practices and all of that. She has put on injustice in place because her career is already labored with injustice and all of that. And the same Kekele Ekun is the one that they put in place at the new CJN. And Nigerians were kind of angry on this move of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Now, new CJN Kekele Ekun have finally come out a According to Sahara reporter, he had finally come out to shock the lies Bola Ahmed Tinubu and APC. What they never expected that this woman can do is what the woman is now doing. The reason why they put her in place is just for the 2027 election according to report so that she can give them the winning, she can give them the election even when the people vote them out and all of that. But the woman finally come out to shock the lies them. APC and Tinubu, they are on a very high jump right now and it is too late for them to remove this new CJN, 
particularly at this very moment because the woman finally come for this. So I'd like us to take my to the end of this video. You will hear from the horseman yourself. You will hear everything that the lady says. So if you can share this video, just do well to share it. Get to the best streaming that platforms. Let it go viral. And if you can share it, just like it as you're watching it. Like it, give it a thumb up. So that it will be recommended for us. You know, a lot of people were saying that Tinubu did not take Nigerian serious. Even when Nigerians came out to protest regarding the hardship that is ravaging the land, regarding the hunger that is involved in every place in Nigeria, the hyperinflation, the high price of commodity of goods, the way people cannot afford to eat one square meal in their house, not even two square meal, one square meal, people cannot afford to eat it in their house. Soldiers are lamenting, security operatives are lamenting, even a lot of civil servants are lamenting in Nigeria because of the high in price of commodity of goods, their salary cannot buy anything again. And the people came out in course of the August 1 to August 10 protest to lay down their agitations and all of that, instead of them to provide a profound solution to the agitations of the people, they dashed them bullet because they number weaponized the security operative against the protesters as if the security operative were going to war. But when kidnappers and banditry is ravaging the country, the security operative will go microscopic. They can't do anything about it. But when it comes to protesters, they can shoot 500 tear gas on a single row. The only people Tinubu prioritize as far as Nigeria is concerned right now, they are the judiciary and INEC. Those are the two organizations that Tinubu actually prioritized. He never played with their matter. The moment Tinubu got to office, he first of all released wardrobe allowance to the judiciary and all of that. And I said that is not enough. They use that as their upkeep. And a few days ago, Tinubu increased the salary of the judiciary by 300%. That is what is happening. Increased the salary of the judges by 300% when people are lamenting that the minimum wages cannot even work for them. He did not prioritize the people, but he knows that the judiciary, they will give him the next election in 2027. Tinubu is a man of strategy according to a report. He is already strategizing against the 2027 election because he knows that the people may not give him the vote that he wants. The people may not give him the vote that will put him in power. That is why Tinubu is doing everything possible to appease the judiciary because they know that they have already appeased INEC on the normal ground. If you should recall the shenanigans, the rascality, the criminality that took place in course of the 2020 election, how they were underage voting, how they were different irregularities in course of the election, thus coming out in different polling units, hijacking different polling units and telling people who to vote for if they are not voting for APC, go back to your house. How they did all sorts of electoral man practices and at the end of the day, I never come out to announce the number as at 4 p.m. as the president elect then. I missed all the irregularities. It was civil I next year, my mama Yakubu that, that was telling the other opposition party to go to court because they know that they have already prepared the court on ground. Because according to a report, the former CJ and Ariwala was the boy boy of Bola I met in Nubu. was so corrupt then. That was it. And as the matter remains, the Supreme Court affirms the legitimacy of Bola I met in Nubu as the president of Nigeria. Now, the same game, according to a report, is what Tinumbu is trying to play out. The same game of the judiciary being bought and Ireland being bought is what Tinubu was trying to play out by swearing in Kekire Okun. He left France when he heard that Kekire Okun is about to be swearing. He left France to come and swear her in and I said that is not enough. He left back to France after the swearing in with the 24 hours and that is what is happening. They take the judiciary serious. They did not take Nigeria serious. Now, listen to what Kekire Okun said in this very video. They never expected that Kekire Okun that they brought to come and give them the election winning in 2027 is finally a Against them. You will hear everything in this very video. And I would like us to stay connected to the end of the video. If you can share the video, just share it. Kikile Ekun is not ready to work with Mama Yakubu. There's irregularities in APC right now. APC politicians are jumpy fence at the moment. Just stay connected. You will hear from the horseman yourself. But before you hear from Kikile Ekun, the new CJN, you will hear what some people said about Nigerian Supreme Court and Nigerian judiciary. You will share tears for Nigeria. Just stay connected. I'm coming back again. <laughs> The judiciary should not be seen mingling with politicians. Who are the judiciary? They are Nigerians. And I think that's the, for me, I think that is the root of the problem. Somehow, you become a governor and you're no longer a Nigerian. Somehow you become a judge, you're no longer a Nigerian. You're a president and you're no longer a Nigerian. And that is the root of the problem. It is a Nigerian problem. If you're a corrupt Nigerian and you're made a judge, you will be a corrupt judge. If you're a corrupt Nigerian and you become a San, you will become a corrupt San. The problem is a Nigerian problem. It starts from the home, it starts from the communities. We don't even hold each other accountable any longer. So, sir, I, I equally have a question for you. Perhaps we should legislate who people marry. Why should a prominent politician's wife be able to be a judge? 
it should be it, it should be against the law we are you see somebody that he's he's I, I laugh at it he's a prominent politician and his wife climbs up and becomes a supreme a supreme court justice we have to regulate these things and some people will say how can you regulate love you're not regulating love you're re regulating sanity and discipline if your if your wife needs to be a judge then you need not be an elected official you must pick one let us get serious let us get serious you hear court judgment <laughs> you hear court judgment and it's been it, it, the, the judge sitting there is the wife of a senator and the senator comes on the floor of the senate and tells us well in the bedroom my i, I have negotiated for some of you and we laugh so i'm, I'm calling on all of us because I, I was talking to my friend dr gash i was saying to him that the simplistic response to all of our problems is to blame the judiciary the simplistic solution to all our problems is to, to blame politicians. If I didn't tell you today that I am a politician or I was a politician before I went on sabbatical, I don't look like one. I don't speak like one. But let me tell you another problem before I sit down, having listened to um, our, our uh, speaker. The bigger problem is, I have to humbly tell you that the politicians you see on your television, in the Senate, the National Assembly, are finished products of a very corrupt route. I remember the first time I was just coming back from the US when I ran for Federal House of Reps. I went to one of the delegates' house, and I must say this with all sense of humility. The man couldn't speak English, was a secondary school dropout, was riddled with poverty, I was trying to understand how can this man gauge if I'm good enough to represent him. I could barely sit on his seat. The house was filthy. All of you politicians know what I'm talking about. But multiple people like him were responsible to vote for who was going to represent them. And then you wonder what is wrong. With all due respect, it's not lawyers that pick these people. It's not, it's not people seated here that choose who is going to represent their parties. Let's get serious. From the root is corrupt. When it's time to pick those delegates, politicians pick delegates who cannot barely understand the system. All they know is the brown envelope. And you let them elect your senators and House of Reps members. And you, what do you expect to get out of it? Let's get serious. When they are writing these delegates, most of them are not even educated. They can't read. They can't write. They don't understand anything. They're waiting for the bags of rice. They don't care about issues. Give me the money. And then finally, because maybe this is not the right time to say all this. But finally, before I sit down, I want to challenge us. Are you waiting for your turn? Because the last election to me was the most sincere. A man who is now, with all due respect, our president, said it is his turn. I felt that was the most sincere statement. Because amongst the political class, amongst the judges, amongst the judiciary, the legislative, all of us are waiting for our turn. Our turn for the, the embarrassingly reality that we are left to cater to ourselves. The very nature of the Nigerian state is what is creating the electoral rot. Every Nigerian is taking care of themselves. So when you are elected, when you're looking for office, you're looking for a means to take care of yourself. Pay school fees, pay for your electricity, pay for water, pay for the road, pay for everything. Even your security you pay for. So tell me, how can you elect me and expect me, who is coming for my own slice of the national cake, to protect yours? The problem is all of us sitting here and those sitting out there. It may be simple to hold the judiciary responsible, but what I hold them responsible for, with all due respect, is before you became a judge, you were a Nigerian. And sir, because you're the governor we're seeing, you were once a governor, and now you are the chairman of the ruling party. Before all of that, you were a Nigerian.
let's think about Nigeria first. Thank you very much. First, let me commend my brother, the Senate Advocate, for a great paper. Um, Noni saying was brilliant. There are so many brilliant people, but there are few sincere and honest people. So I, I respect and commend you for the truth. Brilliance is cheap, but honesty is expensive. Thank you very much. Let me say this very clear, and I'm going to respond to three key points. First, in every country, elections are one of strategy. So in the U.S. today, you see policy people, strategists, thinking around messaging, thinking around mapping constituencies. In Nigeria as well, election is one of strategy. And the strategy of election in Nigeria is very simple. Bribe INEC, bribe judiciary, commandeer the security. And they are done. The, the people that destroyed 23 elections is INEC and judiciary. The rules were clear. The, son, the electoral act is not perfect, but it was very clear. I, I, I'm surprised that any judge who understands administrative law, which I have taught in the university for years, which I studied under the best in the world, would argue that an internal regulation built on a law, an act, a regulation, directing that you will do X, you can choose to do Y. When there is legitimate expectation and detrimental reliance, INEC was totally wrong. And the courts, Supreme Court downwards, got it wrong. When an agency created under the law with a nothing act and the constitution that says you can make rules, makes rules, those rules are law. They can unmake it through rulemaking process. If they don't, they are bound to obey it. Results should have been transmitted electronically. I'm ashamed. I have a PhD in law and I can stand anywhere in the world to dispute the best and brightest. I was ashamed that the court affirmed that I can just walk away from the law. Five years I was a regulator of electricity. When we make tariffs, it's the same way I makes rules. We make those laws, tariffs. They are legal instruments. They are binding law. I hold I make responsible and I hold the courts responsible for the failure of the elections. Sir, it's important to clarify who can sue. Here is the point. Electoral jurisprudence, the problem with Nigerian elections is that they don't understand electoral jurisprudence. Electoral jurisprudence is that the court's job is to restore back power to the people voting. Democracy is not... A, the dispute is not between Mr. Amade and Mr. Kutupupa. No. It's about the people's right to elect their leader. Therefore, we shouldn't be saying that only persons who contested and who could have won could file electoral petition. No. Citizens who voted have a right to go to court and say that the, the, the process was faulty. Look at the US jurisprudence. All the cases that went to court in 2022, in 2020, I guess, we are mostly by civil society groups and voters. That should change. Now, what does it take to nullify election? I always wonder why judges feel that what they call substantive justice, substantive compliance. If elections were conducted outside the rules, that is enough to nullify the election. You don't have to prove that you would have won. Elections should be nullified if they are conducted contrary to rules. Our jurisprudence is 40 on that. So, the question then is, there's a key, a key point somebody mentioned about too much burden on the, on the judges. It is caused by INEC, and I make this clear. The new Electoral Act provides two safeties that we destroyed. First, internal democracy. It says that all candidates must be either elected directly or indirectly. If you choose indirect, then he laid out democratically elected. Let me say it clear. The court has a right and a duty to overrule parties if they 
present candidates they did not go through the rules of the constitution and their own internal rules. There's no justice like saying, look, there are three people here. Members of the party have a right to due process. That's why the act provides for it. And that's the constitution provides for it. So if you do not second guess politicians, then you are, it's not that you are imposing the candidate, you know, you are requiring them to follow the rules. And that's what the Supreme Court has been saying before. And the final point I want to make is very clear on this. I like needs to start doing administrative adjudication. Now let's be very clear. Every process in an election, including rulemaking, including the current results, are administrative procedures that require due process. Mean that INEC should be sitting and making rulings on objections during collection of election. I watch the drama where INEC says, call result, you call result, after I go to court. No, that's not the way. There is an intermediate procedure before adjudication in court. That is administrative hearing. You must establish the validity of those results through a process that INEC cannot make rules, which the court will now review through the judicial review. So the critical point is here, and I want to end on this note. The Amity case you mentioned, sir, interesting case. The court did something that was nice, but look at the failure. The issue is, it's not for the court to impose candidates. Courts can refer a result and ask people to elect, to go back. So we have to redraft timelines to allow for repeat elections, not imposition. And the key point here then is that this is not a matter of nicety. I like the point you made. Politicians are my dogs. You need to police them. But when the policer of my dog is himself mad, then that's confusion. The judiciary should no longer be thinking of politicians as people who want to do public good. The public interest is to impose order and regularity in politics, not to allow politicians to self-regulate. That is a lesson of history. I don't blame politicians. I blame judiciary. I blame INEC. The, the manager of corruption has infected every look and crime. As valuable as the objectives of this lecture are, Nothing meaningful will be achieved unless we are sincerely ready to embrace change. I say this because this is the platform on which the present government was elected. We all say we want change, but when signs of change are coming, we don't seem to be comfortable with it. Many of us still want business as usual. So let's ask ourselves, we desire change. Legal practitioners must be bold enough to give their clients honest advice about the prospects of their cases rather than engaging in all manner of delay tactics to stop proceedings to delay the inevitable. This type of conduct, in my view, amounts to corrupt practice and is certainly responsible for some of the delays experienced in the dispensation of justice. The more the public loses confidence in the judiciary, the society will descend into chaos and anarchy. Where there is a lack of confidence in the judiciary, it affects the nation's ability to attract foreign direct investment, which the country sorely needs at this time. It has an adverse effect on every aspect of our existence. As individual stakeholders, we must do our bit to improve the access to justice in Nigeria. As judges, we must exercise our judicial powers in a fair, honest, transparent, efficient, and effective manner without fear of favor, affection, or ill will. As legal practitioners, we must support the rules of professional ethics which stand us apart from other professions. As law enforcement agencies, we must carry out our duties professionally and in accordance with international best practices. We must not show bias and must respect and must have respect for the rule of law. As court staff, we must carry out our duties diligently and efficiently without expecting any form of inducement in cash or kind. I would also appeal to our senior members of the bar to actualize their role as leaders of the bar. You must set examples for the younger members of the bar and keep them in check when they fail to uphold or maintain the ethics of the profession. Yeah, I wanted to look at your video screen very well. You will see the track record of the new CJN 
on your video screen. The track record of the new CJM is what you're looking at on your video screen. This is directly from Sahara Reporter. You know, Sahara Reporter is known to be one of the best media platforms as far as Nigeria is concerned. They will always come out to bring the truth out and they will always come out to call a speed a speed. They are not being biased and all of that. The Sahara Reporter is owned by Amoya Lesu Urena. Looking at the track record of the new CJM, Kekeleakun, they burn her from entering US. That's to tell you that this woman have a lot of skeleton in her wardrobe according to a report that you've seen on your video screen just go through it carefully you will notice that it was the same woman that sat down on emo state election they sat down on emo state election and she did everything possible under her power to remove pdp governorship candidate in emo state and replace him with hope uzodima the apc governorship candidate and all of that even when the people came out and protest and they made it known that hope uzodima had put the state in a very bad state and they have mafia a lot of things from the state and all of that and the people were saying that opus of demand did not have their mandate they said opus of demand did not win the election but kk Rekun was used to affirm the legitimacy of opus of demand that was why they banned her from entering us because a lot of nigerians in the international communities and in international body they actually reporting these people that was how they banned INEC chairman from entering uk then and us the same thing is what they did to this kk Rekun, the new cjn that tenubu nini appointed now tell me what do you think will happen in 2027 election do you think she will work in favor of tinubu or she will work against bola i mean tinubu those are the questions that nigerians are asking out there <laughs> thank you for staying connected my great and wonderful viewers you can hear everything that was said in this very video you know a lot of irregularities have been taking place in the judicial system of nigeria because according to report the judicial system have finally been hijacked by bola and mentinubu and you know you can see everything that happened in course of the 2020 election with the voters intimidation with the voters suppression with the voters bullying with underage voting and a lot of electoral malpractices talks come out in different polling units all across lagos and all across different places in nigeria telling people who to vote for that if you're not voting for apc you go back to your house if you know you voted for liberal party don't bother to come out in course of the election day those are the words of the talk that were on rampage in course of the election and i see that is not enough the secret operative couldn't do anything about it and you will see operatives secret operatives being seated in different polling units all across nigeria and thoughts will be coming out there beating a lot of voters flogging them and even they stab some people and, and a lot of people actually lost they are live in course of the election thing back then and i said that is not enough they did not bring anybody to book even when they know the chief of talk of lagos mc Leoma, that actually came out to threaten protesters and he actually perpetrated this even even when police defended him back then according to the speech that he meant to bully voters then and nothing is being done to now because he was in favor of apc now after the electoral irregularities and all i next came out mama yakubo with the video evidences and all of that he came out to announce the as the president elect then and was later inaugurated as the president of Nigeria and it was even Ainek Mamo Yakubu Ainek chairman was the one that was telling the opposition party APC Labour Party to go to court if they are not okay with the electoral stops because he knows that the judicial system is already prepared in favor of APC according to reports you know and on getting to court you can see the way the judiciary trying to do everything from the tribunal to the supreme court they did their shenanigans and their rascality and a lot of Nigerians felt their disappointment on the judicial system of nigeria now the same game is what tinubu is trying to play at according to what nigerians are actually saying at the moment they say tinubu is doing everything possible to appease the judiciary he did everything possible to increase the salary of the judicial judges by 300 percent where on net is that happening yes it's good to take care of the judges but the caring must go around in all nigerian firm and all of that because it is not only the judges that are working in nigeria because tinubu did not take all that firm serious he did not take nigeria serious he took the judiciary serious because he knows that he have made hunger to catch the people in his first tenure. You know? he have made the people to see shaggy he have made a lot of people to lose their life in course of insecurity he have made a lot of people to lose all their life savings in the name of the fact that they want to use the little money they have to raise ransom for their kidnapped families and all of that so a lot of people have loved their treasures in nigeria a lot of companies are fold up in nigeria more than 700 companies fold up in the one year of Bola met Nubu in office, even international companies ran out of Nigeria. And I said that is not enough. The people are crying heavy day. They even came out to protest that Tinubu should 
find a solution to the issue that is ravaging the night the hunger issue the insecurity issue the fuel price issue and all of that but nothing is being done even after the protest but Tinubu will never take the judiciary for a plea that is why Tinubu went to France on an unofficial duty of a work stay they call it a work stay we have never seen where that is happening in any country in the world where a city president will go to another man's country and go and sit down under another president there and he left the problem of his country to the people to be managing themselves kidnappers are kidnapping these people every day hunger is killing these people every day a lot of irregularities is happening in the country every day now the president went on an unofficial duty to france and the president of france did not even welcome him we did not see the video where the president of france was welcoming him have nigerian presidency turned to a remote work now have you turned to freelancing that we're doing remotely let us know if it have turned to remote work let other presidents of different countries be coming to nigeria too and come and be staying since our country is good they need to be coming to our country to be staying and be controlling their country from our country the president of france macron should come to nigeria the way tinobu used to go to france in an unofficial way the president of france to come to nigeria and be controlling france from here maybe they don't go to impeach him there because nigerians do not know their right nigerians do not know the law what tinobu is doing at the moment is unlawful it's not in the constitution that's what the law of nigerians are saying even in the twitter space and all of that now they put in kekele ekun so that they can find their legitimacy in 2027 again because Tenobo knows that he may not have the vote from the people because he have made the people to see Shege in his first year and he have made the people to see hell and call it food in the first year that's why he's doing everything possible to pamper the judiciary now it is not the responsibility of any president to swear in a cgn in any country it have never happened in the history of any country before before a cgn can be swear in it is the work of the judiciary themselves to swear in a new cgn it is not the work of the executive now for tenable to swear in a new cgn we you think that in 2027 when there will be elected issue because the number already owe INEC to himself already we know that it is very obvious now in 2027 do you think the person that Tinubu put in at the CGN do you think the person will work against Tinubu party in 2027 with the CGN work against his master that is what a lot of Nigerians are saying they said Tinubu have already camped Nigeria and have already do everything possible to work 2027 for his own favor there may not be a chance for Peter Obi and there may not be a chance for Atiku and there may not be a chance for Suwere with what Tinubu is doing at the moment so that's what a lot of Nigerians are actually saying so drop a pin in the comment section of this video so I'm gonna just get on that note for you and share follow me on my social media handles on Facebook at Live Power TV and Live Entertainment on an Instagram at Large Power guess what guys see you in my next video bye for now Pastor where they bar, where, where yeah. Politics are where they do hey, pass me, say Fool up leader Why you waiting for church? Yeah. Yeah. All I slide you back was TV